Welcome and thanks for joining us for Faith United Online. I am Pastor Tom Schaefer, pastor of Faith United Lutheran Church in Toledo, Ohio. We're glad to have you join us. Um, so we are beginning a, a new series this week. The series is on the Lord's Prayer. It looks like I'm going to go about five weeks with this series, and I'm hoping it's one that will uh, speak to uh, all of us, both uh, experienced and inexperienced, in the life of prayer uh, about how to, how to have a more full prayer life. And so we're going to look at the Lord's Prayer about that, because that is where Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray. Um, but the question to start off with right out of the gate is this. Did Jesus intend for us to recite his words once a week and call that prayer? Not that that's a completely illegitimate way to pray. Uh, to recite words like like the Lord's Prayer, but is that really what was at the heart of Jesus, what Jesus was talking about, what Jesus was teaching to his disciples when they asked him to teach them about, about prayer? Well, let's think about, again, how these words came about. On numerous occasions, the disciples overheard Jesus praying. No other person who has ever walked this earth had a greater relationship with God the Father than did Jesus the Son. Jesus prayed all the time, meals, over people, situations, and frequently he went off uh, alone to pray. And even then his disciples heard him praying. They could overhear him praying. There was something about Jesus' prayer life that was so powerful, so authentic, so intimate, that his disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray as he does. Given that, I think it highly unlikely that what Jesus said to them was, okay, just recite these words. So there's something more, something deeper here that Jesus is teaching us. Consider also that Jesus hand-selected these 12 to be his disciples. Jesus tells them they are to go and to proclaim the good news. Essentially, he tells them that they are to go and be preachers. But there is no record anywhere in the Gospels of Jesus teaching his disciples how to preach. In fact, the most Jesus seems to say to them about that is this. He says, do not worry about how you are to defend yourselves or what you are to say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what you ought to say. In other words, you'll figure it out when you need to. But there is record of him teaching his disciples how to pray. You see, prayer is foundational to all the other practices of discipleship. I've heard it said that prayer is to the soul as breathing is to the body. It's essential. It's natural. It should be easy and rhythmic. And if it isn't, there's something wrong. You're trying too hard. It might indicate some malady. Let me give you an example. A conversation between Karen and I, Karen's my wife, shouldn't be forced. It shouldn't need a rigid structure around it. We've known each other for well over 30 years. And that is not to say that there are not times when the conversation is tense. It does not mean that there is an absence of conflict. And at those times, we may need to work harder to keep the lines of communication open. We may need to schedule some time to, to talk when it's just the two of us. But never should it be rote, forced, or impersonal between the two of us. That's what Jesus says prayer should be like. Prayer for Jesus was life-giving and life-sharing. It was founded in relationship. 
We know that because of the way in which Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Throughout the series, we're going to look at the six phrases, guidelines, that Jesus gave his disciples for prayer, which we call the Lord's Prayer. Right now, I would like you to just take a moment and to rate your own prayer life. Rate it from one to 10. One, you never really pray. 10, something that happens all the time in your life. And when you're rating in that, in that scale from one to 10, you cannot use the number five. So how is your prayer life? Whether you scored yourself high or low, there will definitely be some things for us to learn from Jesus. Let's take a look. We're looking at the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13, where it says this. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. We can split these words into six phrases or foci for prayer. The six phrases are our Father's character, our Father's kingdom, our Father's provision, our Father's forgiveness, our Father's guidance, and our Father's protection. The first focus is our Father's character. Right out of the gate, Jesus shows how intimate and personal prayer should be. He says, our Father. Now the concept of God as Father was not a new one within Judaism. Seeing God as the authoritarian, formal, often distant enforcer of the family roles was not uncommon. But what Jesus says here is actually something quite different. The word Jesus uses is Abba. Interestingly, the word is neither Greek nor Hebrew, the two languages the Bible was written in. The word is actually Aramaic, a dialect commonly used in the day-to-day -day life of the Jews in the first century. That fact gives even more credence that this was the specific word used by Jesus when he taught his disciples to pray. And this word doesn't really translate as father. It is actually the word that a child would use for their father and is best translated as daddy. Now that was radical. People in this day believed all the things we heard from Job's friends. You deserve whatever bad thing that happens to you because it is God punishing you. If you are sick, it is because you are bad and God is punishing you. If you are poor, it is because you are bad and God is punishing you. People did not see God as someone who wanted to have a personal, intimate relationship with them. But Jesus says, when you pray, call him daddy. Now consider the difference. Father carries with it a biological truth. Everybody has a father. You may know him, you may not know him. You may think him good or bad, it doesn't matter. But to call someone dad or daddy is a far different thing. It is a name of affection, endearment, love. It is a name that speaks of a relationship. Jesus says, this is the way you should think of God. Moreover, Jesus tells us that he is the best daddy you can have. Several verses later, Jesus is teaching about prayer again and says this. He says, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. 
and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone, or if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to do to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? We've acknowledged not every father is good, but God, Jesus teaches us, is always good. He wants to give his children good things. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to know how much he loves you because he's your dad. It's interesting to me that, interesting to me that um, uh, we seemingly still haven't learned or at least accepted this initial and quite important teaching from Jesus. First of all, most of our engagement with the Lord's Prayer is simply to recite it from memory. And given that, we really consider the radical na nature of what Jesus is saying here. How, how awkward would it be for you to start all your prayers by saying, Hey, Dad. But that is exactly what Jesus tells you to do. Yet, even as we say that, Jesus does not want us to forget just how, how crazy that is, how unbelievable that is to say. Because he says, pray like this, Our Daddy in heaven, holy is your name. This one, Jesus says, this one I tell you to call daddy is the same one who is holy. Holy means to be set apart. In other words, this daddy of yours is other than his creation. He is the creator of the creation, the God of the universe, the very one who has created it all is the one that you are to call dad. Jesus says, this is my family and you're invited to be a part of this family. You are invited, you're, you're called to be a child of the Holy One and to become holy yourself. But it starts with relationship. You can't be holy without having a relationship with the one who is holy. All discipleship begins with relationship. And so does our prayer. Jesus begins teaching them by saying, Our Father, Our Daddy, it's relationship. And then he says, your kingdom come. Prayer begins with our Father's character. And then it moves to us learning about our Father's kingdom, which is what we will look at next week. Amen.
Hey everyone, thank you once again for joining us. I hope you'll take an opportunity to subscribe and uh, also hit that notification bell so that you will know when new videos are coming up from Faith United uh, Online. Uh, also, if you are finding uh, these uh, teachings on prayer helpful, please do share them with someone else. Give them a thumbs up on the, on the YouTube page. We would really appreciate that. Have a wonderful week. Be safe. See you soon.